Alright, let me uh last one. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, man, we okay. should be good. Alright, for sure, man. So so yes, yeah, good it's good to catch up with you after about two years. I guess you, you won our contest in what was that, two thousand nine? Um Yeah, it was two thousand nine. Yeah. Um, so I wanted, we, we decided to do something different. I don't know if you've seen our, um, like on Sundays last year, I would do these music marketing shows. Um, and the feedback was positive. It was good. We started to get more and more people watching the show, but I thought it'd be good this time around to actually talk to other artists to see what they're doing. Cause I don't want funk volume to sound too preachy. Um, cause there's a lot of ways to go about building a buzz. Um, you know, and, and, and you're a dope artist, you won our contest, you've won tons of contests since then, um, and you, you've been doing your own thing, so we wanted to touch base with you to kind of see, you know, the route you've taken to kind of continue your momentum and build and build your buzz. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, first off, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the people watching are probably your, your fans and they, or they know about you through us, um, but, you know, you just want to just, just say a few things about yourself. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing your name right. Prince E, Prince E A. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either, uh, either way, man. Either way, as long as they say my name. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so you from Saint? So, give us a little background, a little spill. Saint Louis. You know, what, what's what's Prince E all about? Okay, yeah, man. You know, I'm I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. I'm 22 years old. Uh, you know, recently, you know, graduated from the University of Missouri, St. Louis, summa cum laude. Uh, and got my BA in anthropology. Okay. Uh, so you already know, you know, and I make music. So, you know, the academics are a heavy influence in the music that I make. Right. Sometimes they're undertone. You know what I'm saying? Um. But I always punctuate the music with some type of intelligence. Um, but yeah, man, you know, Homer, Homer, uh, Nelly, Chingy, uh, <laughs> in the Midwest right here, man. I, I, I started, uh, you know, uh, this, 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 uh, B Girl. B Girl is this lady. She, uh, she worked on St. Louis Hip Hop, uh, pretty much the biggest website in hip hop. And she, you know what I'm saying? A couple years ago, she told me, um, she said, Prince E, you were, uh, a national artist before you were a local artist. And I was like, damn, you're right. Because, you know, basically I, I kind of capitalized on the digital market. You know, we're still trying to make strides, but that was kind of like the first step that I took, uh, putting my stuff out, stuff out there on the internet. And then, you know what I'm saying, coming back to hit St. Louis, uh, I recently got best hip hop artist in St. Louis, that award. Uh, Murphy Lee won it last year. Uh, so we, we just moving, man. That's, that's in a nutshell what I'm, what I'm doing, man. Congrats, congrats. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that's one thing that's kind of similar to what we're doing. We, we seem to get a better response elsewhere, you know, across across the nation and even internationally. And we have some fans in LA now, starting, our buzz is starting to grow. But it's funny that, you know, you're able to, to release stuff on YouTube and, and things start popping nationally before they start popping locally. So. Why, why do you think that is? Like, what, is, what is it about the local market or the local fans that kind of it seems to be, they, they don't catch on, is it like, they, it's like a tail, they're only catching on at the tail, why, why do you think that is? Uh, man, I caught like the end man, like the, uh, I don't know, is my video cool, like is it, is it skipping or anything, or is it good, because you're kind of skipping, I don't know if anybody else. Yeah, it is. Nah, it is. No, it is skip. How about now? Is is all right? We gotta go. I oh, know. Is uh, it skipping now? Say something. Uh. Uh. So basically, the question I asked is, you know, because we noticed that we started to get a lot more love um, outside of our local market before we started to get love locally. And I was basically asking, why do you think that is that people seem to get wow. more support from everywhere else that, besides that the local question, fan base uh, before you start getting that local love? I don't love. have an answer. The only answer um, I, could, I could think is because, you know, people, uh, you know, we, we have that mentality of, you know, if I can touch you, 
you know what I'm saying, you're not famous. You know, if you're doing it in your town, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and people see you out, you just, you know what I'm saying, you're local. If you're on the internet, it kind of yeah. gives you an air, you know what I'm saying, not not necessarily, a, you know what I'm saying, some type of grandeur, but it, it definitely gives you uh, kind of an aura about yourself, you know what I'm saying, especially if the videos you're putting out are big, you know what I'm saying, and you're doing numbers. Like that automatically, like they see the numbers that you're putting out and they respect it. Like they have no no choice other than respect it. If you're getting 100,000, 300,000 views on something, they're going to be like, wow, this guy, 300,000 people watch this stuff. Like he must be somebody. Uh, so I think, I think you know, people, man, they, and they don't, like something I've noticed, you know, people don't respect the craft for what it is. Like they don't, right. you know, they have to see you actually making moves before they start really respecting your craft. Like a lot of people, the majority of people. I'd say some people, you know what I'm saying, they look at it objectively, but uh, the, the, the majority of people, they, you know, they got that, that sheep mentality where they won't start, start, you know what I'm saying, getting in line unless they see the herd getting in line. So, yeah. Right. I, I definitely agree with you. I agree with you. Um, so yeah, you mentioned so you got this whole make smart cool um, movement going on. You said you, you graduated, you know, got your your degree, yeah. graduated with high honors. Congrats, congrats on that, by the way. Um, Thank you. Man. So, Thank what's the make smart? <laughs> there you go. Get 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 your promo on, okay? <laughs> Always. Um, but but what's that all about? Like why 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 do you think you feel like smart isn't cool right now? Or, What's the Make Smart Cool movie yeah, all about? Yeah, uh, good question, man. You know, uh, to answer that, I have to go back. You know, I have to go back to why I, one of the reasons why I started it. Uh, I was in the cafeteria uh, at my university, you know what I'm saying, uh, a couple years ago. And, uh, you know, we were, we were a lot of people were rapping in a circle, so I came up, like, did it, I was really on, on the political, you know what I'm saying, really, uh, I was really... Uh, you know, political KRS, you know, and more the technique. I was, I hit him with, with some, some conscious stuff. And, uh, you know what I'm saying? I, I spit my little rap and, and this, this female was like, she was like, how you gonna be a smart rapper? And everybody started laughing. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, everybody started laughing. And I was embarrassed. I was like, wow. So, you know, I was embarrassed. So I, I came, you know, in retrospect, I thought about it like, so okay, so rappers are inherently stupid. Are we supposed to stupid? You know, is that what you know a, a powerful, the powerful position of a rapper and orator? You know, what I'm saying deliver these messages and words. We got to be stupid. I think I think it's you know we have. If you go back to the history of hip hop, you had a responsibility to be saying something on a microphone. You know, what I'm saying the MC, the voice of the voiceless. Uh, so you know, I, right. I thought about that and I was like, okay, I'm gonna keep doing this. You know, what I'm saying I'm gonna keep doing me. And you know what I'm saying? I don't care what the, cause I, I had already built like, you know, I already had like uh, a lot of views on YouTube. I had, you know what I'm saying? I had a, like 500,000 views on one joint. I think the red pill, um, like cats were, were really feeling what I was doing. Um, but you know what I'm saying? I said, okay. And I, I started, not only that, I started looking at society. You know, this is a big thing. Like being that I'm an academic, I look at society and I'm an anthropologist. You know, one of the, the key principles of science and anthropology is, is you know, that, that objectivity, you know what I'm saying, that scientific objectivism. Uh, so, you know, I looked at the world and how we look at intelligence and being smart, and it's totally backwards. You know what I'm saying? Like you look at uh, any any avenue, in the, any whether it's TV, whether it's radio, the newspaper is written, you know, fifth grade education. All of that is, is, is crazy. So I felt like, well, why not smart, cool? You know, people, uh, we, we, we need to start you know, promulgating intelligence, especially to the kids. You know what I'm saying? You look at every problem we have in society uh, with America. Yeah, I think I lost uh, you. And, and, you know, education is the key. Um, so I just felt, like, you know, a lot of artists said before, but they never solidified it like they did. They never compartmentalized and packaged it like it. So I came with that, you know what I'm saying? And just hopefully to, to get a unification, gotten support from, you know, Immortal Technique, law. You know what I'm saying? We've gotten grants, we've got donations, we, you know what I'm saying? And we're just starting to build. We're really in our infant stages right now. And the more support we get, really, the, the, the happier I become because I really see, you know, the, the movement, you know, being self-actualized. Like, we're really making smart cool. So, you know, that, that's pretty much why I did it, man. We got a lot of things on the way. Like, 
you know, every and every everybody, you know, talks about it. like, you know, Obama, you know, he had a uh, you know, a speech a couple uh a couple months ago. He said, uh, you know, we need to focus on uh who wins the science fair over who wins the Super Bowl. You know, and that right, you know, it, it's the perfect time for a movement like mine to really take shape and really, you know what I'm saying, not only take hip hop back to, you know what I'm saying, actually saying something substantive, but taking the culture back from, you know what I'm saying, the corporate America that is, you know what I'm saying, kind of fed us nonsense and programmed us. Like, why do you think they call it programming? You know what I'm saying? They programmed us to kind of like the, uh, you know, the cotton candy as opposed to the real steak and the, the food of the word. So, you know, that's the, that's the movement in a nutshell, man. Nah, that's dope. That's dope, man. I, I I could definitely appreciate. I at this point, man, I just appreciate anything that's different, because um, I feel like hip hop has, has gotten to this mode where it's the same thing over and over and over again. Um, so to see something like that that's positive and different, um, you know, more power to you. But when you say when you say make smart cool, how are you defining smart? Like, are you saying cats have to go get their degrees? Are you saying you know what what cool. what would what would be defined as smart? Good question, man. Uh the acronym is smart is actually uh sophisticating millions and revolutionizing thought. Basically we we want to polarize the notion of intelligence. We wanna make smart cool. And you know, not only smart academically, but you know, smart in your everyday life. Uh because that's that's truly making smart cool, whether you know uh, you go out tomorrow on the 4th of July and, you know what I'm saying, you get into an altercation with somebody, whether or not you walk away or not, you know, that can determine your future. You know, that's making smart cool to rather take that alternative route, you know what I'm saying, as opposed to posturing, stepping up on them and, and getting into a confrontation, you can just walk away. Or, you know what I'm saying, whether it's, you know what I'm saying, you see a female that's nice, uh, you take her back home, whether to use a condom, whether to be smart and, and, and use a condom or not. Uh, just having foresight. You know what I'm saying? We kind of want to want to popularize that, you know, having foresight and being intelligent in the decisions that you make in your everyday life. So you don't have to have, you know what I'm saying, a, a 4.0 to be involved in Make Smart Cool. You don't have to have any type of, you know, uh, a Ivy League degree. You know, anybody can be in it as long as you want to see intelligence uh, perpetuated and promulgated throughout society. You're, you're in it. Wow. Cool. Well, what a lot of these, what a lot of these younger cats don't understand is like smart is already cool. Like once you get older, yeah. like I, yeah. I guess, and depending on where you grow up, you know. And if it, I mean, in some places, smart is cool when you're young, but but smart is hella cool when you get 25, 30. Dumb is is. I mean, I know and no ladies gonna mess with you. If you're dumb. <laughs> um, yeah. So so <laughs> so it, it's it's interesting that it's a young phenomenon and it's like. It, being smart isn't cool in certain areas or certain neighborhoods, um, but but no, I I, pre, I I definitely appreciate the movement, man. Um, and I know that there's something like that is. I mean, you're kind of at the forefront because you because you rap, but I know there's got to be some other people behind you, you know, helping you solidify the foundation. Who else do you have on your team, or is it a team? Is it just you? Um, yeah. You know, how are you guys setting this up? Yeah. Definitely, definitely. You know, I'm the I'm the founder. I'm the president. Uh, we got a VP. Uh, I got you know, it's this it's a cat in Canada named Beth. Uh, a lot of people in South down here. You know, people we actually um really want to turn it into now. We we got an LLC. We really want to eventually into a non for profit. Uh, we're talking about S type corporations. We we, we have a, a bunch of different routes that we can take it. Uh, but we got Erica Henderson, my you know my publicist from you know in Atlanta. Uh, we got Gabe, uh, you know what I'm saying, guys that, that are really on the ground because I think that's where you really have to be, you know what I'm saying, to, to really make an impact on people is on the ground. Uh, and, and since right. we're like that grassroots, that organic, you know what I'm saying, type of movement, we've got people everywhere from Travis to my, my boy 20 Twin, you know what I'm saying, you see my boy Remy D who was in grind time, uh, you know, he's been in Smack Fight Club, he's a part of the movement. So we got MCs, we got designers, we got a lot of a lot of just creative people are part of the movement. Um, so, and we just keep, you know, really mushrooming. 
uh, one of the things also we have uh, right now the site, the, the Make Smart Cool site, uh, where you can sign up for it is, is, is down right now because the, the website's being restructured. Uh, but we have a place on the website where you can sign up and you can tell us, you know, where, you know, where you think you will be of, of most use. Uh, so whether that's part of the design team, the marketing team, uh, whether you want to uh, manage all, you know, the online, the digital, uh, the digital scene, the social networking scene, uh, you can actually sign up and you can be a part of it and you can connect with people in your region. Uh, so we've got we've got over 700 members right now from from everywhere from you know Philly to New York to, to even Australia we got people so we're really moving man it's really a, a global movement uh, that's dope man you can sound like you guys are building the right relationship and getting getting the proper people on board I think a lot of people don't understand you know especially when you're you're, you're talking about independent artists versus these majors they got a bunch of money to just throw at things you know we don't have that so we have to build we have to have these you know people basically volunteering um fans getting involved um and really mobilizing that in, in order to, to to make an impact and to be able to compete i mean not just with, i mean it sounds like you're doing a lot more than just music you know just pushing the whole movement basically um so that's dope man that's that's that's, that's real dope so I just kind of want to trans transition away from the Make Smart Cool. I got a question to ask you because I, I, I kind of got to go in on you uh, for this one. As a comment that you said to me um, over Facebook, I think maybe like a year ago or something. I think it hops in the video. You post this video and you said something like, well, I usually don't like posting other artists' videos. I can't quote you oh, verbatim if you got exactly what you said. Uh, but it was something to the effect where you don't like promoting other videos so i had you know once i got you on this little show i had to ask you you know what what you meant by okay maybe it's because i was moving around a little bit yo 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 um i'll let it catch up i'm just gonna yeah, yeah i can hear you it, it might need to catch up uh, all right can you hear me can yeah. you hear me now you, you cutting out a little bit but i can hear you I can. Can you hear me now? Okay. So, so I, the one thing I wanted to ask you about is, is something you post, or I think you you, you, repl you replied to like. Okay. Um. So you said I think Hobson released a video last year, and you posted it, but you also told me that you don't like promoting other other artists' music. Um, that's not verbatim exactly what you said, but but essentially that's that's what I got from it. Yeah. Um, care care to explain that comment? Um, uh, ah, you know my my actual Facebook page has I, I'm kind of interested from there because my Facebook page has become uh a nest for people to you know post uh, videos up and spam my page, and usually I let it go. Sometimes I. I like, you know, remove that post, you know, get that out of here, don't use my page, you know, the spam, uh, you know, they like, check this out, Prince, and they post it on my wall as opposed to, you know, sending it to me in a message. Uh, I, I see what y'all do, man. Don't, don't think I see, don't see it. But, uh, but no, man, I, I, you know, if you're nice, man, yeah. I will definitely put up, man, I will, I will post anything, or Hobson, you know, anything volume. You know, it's the Cat X, the Mortal Technique, uh, you know, I just, I just post, uh, Aesop Rock. You know what I'm saying? So I, you know, I, I really don't have a problem in it. Uh, even I'm not even sure, like what my logic was, like where I was, op where my life was operating from. I'm that I said that. Uh, it might have <laughs> been some fish mood I was in, like man, get like promoting other people's pages. But no, so you know, it's good. I, I would definitely hot. I'll put it up. Uh, so, so yeah, no problem with it now. <laughs> nah, nah I, I'm just giving you a hard time, man. I know you're a good dude, and, and you. And most artists will promote artists that are that are dope. Um, <laughs> but but that's actually one of the things we're focusing on this year is you know now that we got a you know a small little buzz for ourselves, we're really focusing on building relationships and leveraging other artists that have kind of a, a a buzz themselves because 
you know, what I notice is, you know, when Hobson says something from his page, a lot more people pay attention than if I say something from the front volume page. Um, and if you have a group of artists that are all supporting each other, doing that exact same thing for each other, then, I mean, you guys can you know, basically get a lot of exposure very quickly. Um, you know, a lot of what we do, I mean, you've seen a lot of what we do, we drive through Facebook. Um, you know, there's there's no right way to do this, but our, our strategy is, is, you know, a lot of what we do is, is, is through Facebook. Um, I know that you have you have a Facebook presence, but it seems like a lot of what, what you're focusing on and, and on top of the, the Make Smart Cool is these contests um, and YouTube. You have a heavy YouTube presence. Um, and you just want to, you just recently won a couple contests or the Magnum Live Large contest, right? What was that all about? Yeah, the, the Magnum contest, you know, uh, out of a couple thousand artists that submitted, uh, basically you had to uh, submit a 60 second video uh, explaining uh, why you live large, uh, why, you rep why, why you represent Trojan uh, Live Large campaign, which is, uh, you know, the spokesperson for Ludacris. Uh, so, you know, you rap over, either you can rap over their beats that they submit, the Trojan beats that they had, which was, I didn't like them, but, you know, or you can go a cappella. Ended up going a cappella, creating through my own video. My boy Brandon Sloan got it. Um, you know, we, we we put that out there. We had the fans vote for it. Uh, I got I got the call. You know, what I'm saying once the contest was over, that I you know Prince E, you did everything right. We want you. You know, they flew me down to Miami. Uh, I got five thousand dollars in my pocket. They you know, like took care of me. I had the limos there for us, the drivers. They had uh. You know, we, we I rock I rock the stage with Ludacris, Khaled, Busta Rhymes. Uh, you know, developed some connections, and I was out. You know what I'm saying? I was out. Came back home, got the you know what I'm saying the uh, you know best hip hop artist in St. Louis. Got that at an award show, Real Front Times. Um, and then re most recently, I got the uh, I got a record that I'm working on right now with Juicy J from a contest that he was Three Six Mafia from a contest that he uh, posted up. It was like, you know, we, we ended the contest like three days, two or three days before it was over. And cats had been grinding for like months. And we entered it like three days before and we ended up taking it. So it, it, it's just mm. a testament to the, the passion of my fans, man. You know what I'm saying? The, mm. the real uh, truth uh, surrounding my music, uh, the real and, and just, you know, the, like I said, just the... Uh, the passion and the spunk of my supporters because I, I'd be nothing without them, man. You know, I, uh, you know, the fans, they keep me going they keep me, they keep me living. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, right now I get, I get, we get money from a lot of different avenues, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, eventually right. I, I would like to, uh, you know, be able to support my, be able to not only, you know, support myself, but support a family off of this music. You know what I'm saying? That's what we're doing. You know, we're trying to, we're trying to really live off of it. So, Hey, shout out! Shout out to all my Prince E fans, all the all the supporters of Make Smart Cool, man. It's all for for a higher uh, a higher purpose, a higher cause that we're trying to do. Um, you know what I'm saying with this music and what I do in the community. So that's what it is. No, congrats, man. That's that's actually one thing that I wish Hobson and Swizz would would take part in more is these contests because. You know, like you're doing, you mobilize your fan. Your fan base, to me, as an independent artist, or as, as any artist, really is your key. And as your fan base grows, it unlocks different opportunities. Um, you know, as you get more and more, more fans, you're able to do a lot, a lot more, um, a lot more with it. You know, so when these contests come about, if you already got, you know, ten, twenty thousand fans, that's ten, twenty thousand votes, um, and I mean, it, that's valuable. That's extremely valuable. Um, so I guess be, be looking out for some competition from Hobson and Squiz, um, uh, yeah. when you know when these future contests come up, because I'm gonna get these cats to enter them. Um, they've been a little lazy yeah. on that, uh, but but we we come <laughs> after with some of these contests, bro. <laughs> See, I think um, I, I think well, cool, man. So what? So what's say, I, I what's, think, uh, what's the uh, what's the plan? I think uh, I, I think that <laughs> what 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 what's the plan? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> what was you about to say? No, 
Now you go go ahead first. I was gonna. I was, okay. Yeah. I was gonna, yeah. I was gonna uh, change you know, it up. I think you know. It, uh, a fort, a f- now go ahead with your comment What's first because I, I was about mean, to uh, switch switch, you know, switch to another uh, topic. Twenty thousand fans doesn't translate exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like some fans, you know, they get lazy, but you got some fans who do more. You know, which I love. Uh, but uh, but yeah, man, cats cats definitely get lazy. Like my philosophy is. Is if you're gonna do anything, why not just go hard? You know what I'm saying? If you if you just just you know if you enter a contest and you just forget about it, like what are you doing? Like you need to spend your your waking moments trying to win right. that contest. You know that's a jewel for any artist that's that's trying to really win something. You know why why not? You know what I'm saying you only got a week to grind. Why not spend? You know what I'm saying 18. You know just just get it in. You know what I'm saying so. That's the grind. I guess that's what separates, you know what I'm saying, me from a lot of a lot of other artists, man. I really, you know, if I want something, I'm going to go get it. So a lot of cats aren't willing to do that. Right. Right. Not that, I mean, that's something that, that, I, that I admire about you, man, and, and a lot of artists aren't willing to do that. Um, I think what my personal opinion is that a lot of artists are afraid to go super hard because then they'll have an excuse when they fail. Like, oh, I didn't really mean, you know, I, I wasn't really going that hard. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not really a rapper. Yeah. You know, they, they kind of want to stay on that borderline uh, so that they have an excuse, you know, if, if they're to fail. But, you know, that that mentality. One thing about me, man, is. Is that you know? Uh, it's a quote that I will I will always remember. You know, fortune favors the bold. You gotta be willing to fail. You know, you never hear me saying. Uh, you know, and it's the same with school. You know, I hear cats saying, "Oh man, you know, I could have got a I could have got a point nine if I really I could have got a four not four point oh if I really uh really tried. I didn't try. I didn't right. try. You know what I'm saying? You just wait a semester. You know it's you know it's no point nothing comes from nothing. you know what you get in what you put out you know so you gotta you gotta you gotta go hard man and, and if you fail you fail but you still gotta keep going now i'm, I'm with you 100 percent on that i'm with you we're gonna get to i'm sure there's some questions i gotta click over and see how many people left questions on the front volume page but but before i i i ask some of those questions so what's the, what's the plan this year like what's the strategy or what what's next you got an album, you got a collab, you got shows, you know, what's what's next for Prince E? Yeah. Yeah, all of that, man, you know what I'm saying? I'm working on a double album right now. Uh, you know, we in talks with some majors, but right now that's not really on our on our radar. You know, we got a lot of uh I'm actually coming to your 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 part of town, man, uh probably I, I think middle late July. Uh, I'm working with a videographer out there. We're about to knock out about five videos. Um uh, pretty sure most of them will go viral, so you know that's that's our strategy, man. Keep killing the internet. Keep developing, you know, fans, and you know, uh, keep you know working on the ground as far as the make smart cool movement. Keep pushing that. Keep organizing, and you know, keep doing a lot of good in the community. Uh, we, we're gonna collab with a lot of universities, like the university that I graduated from. Uh, actually, you know, uh, one of my my four thousand level professors. Uh, her name is Susan Brownell. She's uh, you know, she's 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 a cultural anthropology professor. Uh, she kind of fell in love with music. I got a song called The Brain, uh, in which I kind of break down the faculties of the brain from an anthropological, a sociological, uh, and, and an architectural standpoint. Uh, she loved it. She even posted it on course documents for, the, for my class to see. She played it in front of the whole class. I was like, wow, okay. So actually, uh, I'm, I'm going to be working with, with the department on some music and basically just just trying to you know uh, you know popularize anthropology and really get out get out the message of, of you know that, that it's that it's cool to, to integrate you know uh, anything intellectual in your music. Um, so I'm working with that. I'm, I'm like I said I'm probably putting out a double album uh, sometime in a couple of months. Uh, I'm actually working on a few records. You already know my boy. Uh, you know on the album I'm gonna have to have a mortal technique on it. My my mentor I'm gonna have to have Black Thought on it. Uh, I was I was just talking to Just a Lie. Uh, we we about to start working on a record. Uh, you know, I, I really want to get something with the, some of the young guys like the Cole, Kendrick Lamar. I really got a idea. I'm gonna see if I can match them in some type of way. 
we just keep it your man and keeping it work trying to put out good music and, and, and keep not only good music but interview music. You know what I'm saying? Say in the beginning of the interview, you know what I'm saying? We don't want to put out anything boring uh, or repetitive or redundant. You know what I'm saying? We want to we want to push the boundaries. And, you know, like Hobson does. You know what I'm saying? Just push the boundaries of music and, 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 and lyricism. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> mm. Not free. I, I think I think there's a lag. I'm 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 gonna shut up for a second to to let this thing catch up because I think there's a little bit of lag, but I I, I caught ninety nine percent of your response. Um. Uh. But. But what I appreciated about the response is that it was hella long. I think a lot of artists don't understand like how much has to be done to continue the momentum. I mean, you're talking about videos, songs, collabs, building relationships with your, um, you know, the faculty at your school. I mean, there's just so much has to be done in order to stay visible and to continue like an independent, um, the independent grind. I think some cats think they just make music, put it, throw it up on the YouTube throw it up on YouTube and then things just start coasting from there and that's, I mean that hasn't been our experience if it doesn't sound like it's, it's your experience. Um, so man, I know the last time you flew out to LA you said you were going to hit me up, that didn't happen. Um, so this time, you know, hey. hopefully <laughs> hopefully you hit us up man. We should be we should be in town, we got a show, we got a show, we got a show uh, in Seattle on July 30th but, but outside of that we should be here. Um, they should be in the studio working on their um, on Haywire too, and then Swizz is solo album, so we'll man, be around, man. man. Hit us up, definitely. definitely. Yeah, man. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta get in, man. Uh, you know, uh, we, we gotta collab on something, man. You know, funk volume makes more cool. We gotta coalesce, man. Anything I can do, man. You know, let me know. If we can uh, take over, dog. Uh, uh, that for sure. I mean, I'm, I, you know, me personally, I'm all about making smart, cool, and, and you know, and hopping yeah. and Swizz are definitely not idiots. You know, they're smart. They're just, they're just, you know, it's just a different image. But I'm all about, you know, I'm all about, you know, lyricism. Um, you know, a lot of the same elements that make smart cool are kind of embodied in turn it up because turn it up essentially means work harder, work smarter. Um, you know, we just haven't come up with a cooler way to say it. Uh, but but people understand that that's what that means, um, and when, when people hear some of Swizz's lyrics, you know they they understand that he gets political, um, you know he also gets wild and crazy, and that that's him, um, you know. But, but we're not idiots, man. I'm 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 I'm, I'm fully on board with Make Smart Cool. I went Hobson Swizz didn't didn't finish college, but you know I did. I went on to get another degree, so. Um, you know, I'm fully on board with, 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 with getting degrees and continuing to read and learn. Um, I don't necessarily think you have to go to college. Um, college is not for everybody. I feel like it's the best route until you figure out what you really want to do. Um, but yeah. Okay. But anyway, let me, let me get back to, uh, let me get, let me see who's, who's asked some questions because I know there's a ton. Just give me one sec. Apparently there is a oh, wow. oh there is a chat room but we can't see it. Uh, that doesn't I don't know how much sense that makes. And they said yours is lagging. <laughs> Okay, I asked for questions and then they started asking Hobson questions. Um, yeah, it was good. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. E, can you still hear me? Okay, here we go. He says, in your opinion on 2012, 
Like, do you think anything special will happen? Uh, you know, I, like, I'm assuming he's referring to I don't, people I, thinking that I, the world. I'm not really end a proponent of, of you know the end of days theory. Uh, you know, I don't think any any scientists, you know, how we can pretty much see astronomically if anything is coming near us or anything like that. Uh, and there's no data that suggests that uh, any type of uh, extremely large, uh, you know, cataclysm is nearing. Uh, you know, I think that if anything happens, it's going to be, you know, anthropomorphic. I think that we're going to cause it, um, you know, in our fear. You know, somebody's going to die. You know, there, there probably will be suicide. I'm sure there'll be suicide. Uh, you know, but I, I, I don't, I don't think so. I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to do anything differently that I'm not already doing. I'm still trying to, you know, change the, you know, put a positive effect on the world. I'm trying to build relationships with my friends and family and, you know, make good music people can listen to a too and, you know, make smart cool. So I'm just, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to get, I might try to make some money off of 2012. You know, there's got to be some type of money I can make. I don't, I haven't, I don't even realize the idea yet, but uh, <laughs> exploitation and capitalism is the way to go. No, I'm just kidding. No, we we just gonna keep keep making moves, man. And I really, I'm not really worried for 2012. I mean, I, I don't. I mean, I don't really think anything major is gonna happen. But people are making money from it. Um, shoot, if you come up with an idea, you might as well get some money from it too. Uh, capitalize on people's stupidity. Um, uh, let me see. My computer's at. My computer. My computer's at. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I hope. I hope there's. I hope there's a, uh, a some type of shift. You know, I've heard that. Uh, I've heard the theory that the world. Uh, is going to end, but the world as we know it is going to end. I've heard that some type of dimension changes will happen. Some type of uh, wormholes will open. Uh, you know, these things are really fantastic. You know, I would love for them to happen. I'm not putting much stock in them happening. Uh, but who knows? You know, uh, you know, uh, maybe, you know, maybe. Okay. So my, my Facebook is acting up. I can't see any of the questions. Um, so I'm just going to ask a couple of my own. So now that you have your your degree, um, so it, it, are now you 100% focused on the music and, and building out Make Smart Cool? Or do you see yourself going back to school or getting a, a regular job or anything like that? I do. I do. Uh, you know, all of those. You know, really, uh, you know, right now I'm 100% working on Make Smart Cool, working on Prince E, putting everything I got into it. Uh, however, uh, I love anthropology. For those that don't know, anthropology is a study of us humans across uh, time and space. Um, so, you know, I, I definitely want to exploit the degree. Uh, graduate school is definitely on my radar. Uh, I figure in about two years, I'll probably go back. Um, but, you know, right now it's just 100% music. 100% killing the game, 100% make, making smart cool. Um, you know, eventually my, my real dream, you know, if you got any connects, you know, I really want to, uh, you know, try to tie in, you know, the, uh, the anthropology, like, you know, r really get, get the music popular enough where I can parlay that into something with the, you know, with these channels, with these Discover channels, science channels. You know, I was in Discover magazine uh, in the last year. Um, so if I could parlay something like that, you know, maybe on a show, get some type of uh, some type of role in, in a show, some type of major role show, I would love, you know what I'm saying, I would, I would really love it. And especially something anthropological, that would definitely be, you know, ideal for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, it's just 100% music. Mm. No, that's dope. So what, I mean, and again, so there's a, I see a lot of the things, I see a lot of things in, in Make Smart Cool that we have kind of in our vision and just more generally, you know, when you think about focusing on the music, I mean, obviously funk, funk volume is music, that's what it will always be, um, but but the, but the you focusing on the music now, getting that popular, making sure that pops, 
is going to open up so many doors once that becomes once that becomes cool. I mean, it's unfortunate that you have to make things cool in order to to do different you know positive things in the community and whatnot. But that's just the kind of that's just kind of it is what it is. Um, and we kind of have a similar mentality with 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 funk volume. You know, once funk volume becomes cool. I mean, we do community service events now, and we get, you know, 10, 20 people out. But if we were as big as Lil Wayne, I'm sure if we did a community service event, we'd have, like, 10,000, 20,000 people, you know, coming out to these events. Um, you know, but I'm sure as you progress with the music, as your fan base grows, more opportunities will open up. Um, yeah, man, and I just, I wish you the best with that, you know, if, if we can... We're together. I don't know how it can happen, but I know that the building relationships is a big part of what we're doing this year. Um, you know, I, I'm not an artist, so I can't say, you know, collab with me. Um, you know, but if we, but if we can, you know, we can, we can support Make Smart Cool in any way, man. We're, we're, we're definitely down to do that. Um, so just keep us posted. Uh, let me, let me try one more time on this Facebook, see if I can see these questions, but I can't even get my Facebook to open up right now. And I, Yeah, I can't, I can't, is any, can you see your Facebook page or anything, any questions people ask on your page? Uh, let me see, I'm going to check on my phone. Yeah, they're asking, how do we ask questions? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't know. I, t just tell them to tweet okay, it. I, tell them to I'm, tweet them, huh? To funk to either your either either your your Twitter or the funk volume. Okay. I, I mean, mine is just at funk volume. Uh, Cause I, I keep getting I'm getting emails now too, talking about we they they. Asking if we could read what they're typing. What you say about that is the chat in the uh, in this in this page, but it's not you can't see it. So there is a there is a chat room, but you and I can't see it. I guess it's because this site I guess is designed to have you know basically a dialogue between two people, and maybe they think that the that if we see the chat room, it's disturbing. Um, I don't know, but I actually need to see it. So I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell my homie need to put the chat, room, make the chat room so that we can actually see it if he wants me to use this thing. The website, man. What, what exactly are the features of the, of the website? It looks really uh, dope right now. Cause the the, it's actually a better interview tool than UStream. Cause I tried to use U. Yeah, I don't. I mean. I haven't talked to him. I haven't talked with him too much about it, um, and I don't. Yeah, so I don't. I don't know what this is going to have any diff. How it's going to be any different than what Ustream's trying. I know Ustream's interview tool is is terrible. Like it's worse than this. Um, but if he can just improve it so that it's real time and then it has the chat, and you know, I'll be a, a a fan of this site. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me just let me just okay okay well, I got we got some questions coming through now <laughs> so so somebody asked what is the most difficult part about trying to self promote your music Did you hear? Did you did you get the last question? No, no, no. What's the question? 
Uh, <laughs> I see, somebody asked, what's the most difficult part about trying to self-promote your music? About trying to what? Trying to promote your, your music yourself. The most difficult part about trying to promote my music myself. Uh... I'd say, you know, uh, um, I'd say thinking of marketing strategies, you know what I'm saying, how to, how to push stuff, uh, you know, uh, but, you know, sometimes that comes easy. Like, you know, a lot of people saw the Nerve video, you know, I went, I hit like, I think a million, a million views if you look at World Star Hip Hop and what I got on, you know, YouTube. I got over 500,000 views on, on YouTube for the Nerve Rap. You know, people think I just came up there and I just did that. No, it was, you know, it was definitely orchestrated. Like the whole nerd, uh, you know, outfit, uh, if I can use that word, is is constructed. You know, I don't, you know, I enjoy wearing bow ties. I enjoy doing, you know, uh, you know, being different from other people. But, it, you know, it made things a lot easier because I don't think people can really grasp. Like Pat Poos had a, a movement called Thuggication. You know, it was, you know, I don't know if you heard of it, but, you know, it wasn't that successful. It was, it was, you know, mildly successful, but it wasn't that successful because, you know, I think that people need something coherent. You know, you, you can't have that cognitive dissonance is what you call it when you hold two different concepts in your brain. So basically what I did is see, I'm already intelligent. You know, I already have, you know, the, 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 you know I graduated summa cum laude, anthropology degree, all of that. You know, I got all these awards, you know, for my academics. Uh, so making making me a nerd was kind of like an obvious choice. It was kind of easy, you know, and doing that had a lot of more people say, oh, I get it now. I get it now. And that's what you want. You know what I'm saying? You don't want things to be difficult for people to understand, uh, especially not in the beginning. Uh, so, you know, everything, everything is marketing. Right. Everything is, you know, image is big in hip hop. You know, I've noticed that. You know, image is huge in hip hop, uh, unfortunately. Um, but you know, I, you know, the, the whole nerd thing, um, you know, it's, it's what I'm doing right now. You know, it's, it's, I've got a, uh, I've got bow tie company sending me, uh, sending me free bow ties. I got, you know, people sending me button ups and, uh, you know, glasses. So you know, it's, it's, it's good, man. It's, it's, it's really amazing, and it separates, you know, everything you want to do in in hip hop, you know, or in any any discipline. Any field that you get in, you want to separate yourself from others. You want to, you want to, you want to figure out what what do you do nobody else does, and you want to nurture that. You know, you want to develop that, and that's what I'm doing. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. So 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 now, I mean, now you're in 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a okay in an okay space. Like you're past the point where you're just throwing your music up on random people's walls saying check me out you know so going back to when you just started like how did you how did you hurt over like how did you get over that stuff how did you like did you when you started were you just spamming people's walls like how did you you know because that's where that's where to be honest that's where a majority of artists are like that's that's just the space where they are and and you know very small percentage of artists are going to be able to even hurdle that step um so is there anything specific that you did to, to 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 not be that annoying rapper? <laughs> I think, you know, I think, you know, my boy Wack, uh, you know, L artist just got signed a jam, you know, did perfectly, you know, the clip crop will rise. There's you no know, saying he said, you look good, you're gonna notice. Even though that uh YouTube is all saturated with artists. If you're really good, you're gonna get noticed. You gotta work on the quality of your product, and you gotta work on packaging before you put it out. You just can't put a, uh, you know, a, you know, small Canon, you know, barely HD video. You gotta go that 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 7D, all the pixels, and you know what I'm saying that that really, you know, 1080p, uh, you know, that quality in order to put out the put out the product. And you gotta, uh, you know, but, but what I did. Uh, to start out, I definitely, I definitely spam. I spammed a lot of similar artists' pages, like similar <laughs> artists, like say, if you like this guy, check me out. Check me out. Or even on you, you could probably go find some YouTube man 
somewhere from me where they're saying like, hey, if you like this Cassidy freestyle, check out this guy. Uh, you know, and, and people, people really started checking me out. Uh, and that, that, you know, developed a, a small following. That developed a small following. Uh, and then, you know, the tags, like, you know, how you, how you position it. I can only really speak from a YouTube perspective um, because that's kind of where I did the most damage. And, you know, it was basically, you know, good titles. You know, people don't understand the, the, the uh, basically the significance of a good title, a good short, succinct title, uh, a good thumbnail, a good picture that people will click on. You know, you got like, you know, a percentage of a second for people to see something and click on it. Uh, so it's a real science behind how do you get people to click on and watch your video. And after all said and done, you got, like I said, back to the beginning point, you got to make sure that your product is right. You got to make sure that the quality is there. You just can't have people clicking on something and the quality is bad or they'll remember you for the wrong reasons, though. You know what I'm saying? So that's it. That's it. Mm. No, that's that's real. I mean, so you, I mean, you touched on a few different things. Um, you know, I went to business school, so I understand marketing. If anybody that that has took a marketing class, you got these four P's, right? You got price, product, place, and promotion. So, and I would agree with you that the first thing that you that, that a lot of artists need to work on is just the product. You know, forget everything else. You know, make sure that what you have to present to people is on point. Um, because if the product's not good, then it really doesn't, everything kind of breaks down. It really doesn't matter. Um, but it sounds like you did a good job of really focusing your efforts. I mean, because we all only have, we're only working with a small, probably a small budget, a very small or no budget. Um, and, and you only have so much time. So you, so you identify the artists where, where you would place your stuff, the, the, you know, the, the placement, the P, you know, of where you might get, the best response for spending for, for spending your time. So, um, but yeah, I'm so our pet. Yeah, I was in uh, I was in you know I was I was in college in my college dorm room, and anybody will tell you, man, I was rapping out of a microphone and a shoebox, like a computer microphone and a shoebox <laughs> in a karaoke program, and I was getting four hundred thousand views on a lot of my stuff because of the marketing because. You know, one, I would, uh, you know, you, you got to sucker people in, especially, you know, if you have a message, you got to sucker people in so they can get that message. So all of my fans that have been with me for a couple years, they knew I was titling stuff, you know, Jay-Z versus Lil Wayne. And I had like a Jay-Z versus Lil Wayne picture, and only it was a Prince E rap, you know what I'm saying? Like it was a, it was a real political song. So, uh, you know, if you do that, you better have a good product because once people see that and you, they feel like they're bambo <laughs> they've been bamboozled for something whack, yeah, uh, they're, they're gonna click off of it. But the thing about what I did was I had such a good a good message and a good you know salient uh -huh. substantive message that people were like, wow, like thank you for for suckering me into this video. Like where can I mm -hmm. check out more of your stuff? But you gotta make sure you got that, that that product. I think that's you know that's a large part of the battle. Nah, I, I definitely agree. I definitely agree. I mean, but I, I mean, we understand the grind that, that most of these artists are on. I don't mind them spamming our pages. I leave it up there because um, that's that's where it seems like that's where a lot of people start when you don't have any money. <laughs> um, you know, check me out. You know that that famous the famous line is, "Oh, I just checked out your music. It was dope. Now check out mine." And you notice they just copy and pasted that, you know, a hundred thousand times over. Um, but it's all good, man. There's a lot of rappers out there. A lot of rappers. All right, let me see. There's, there's, there's some more questions. Uh, check my face page, too. I'll put out a text. Let me check Twitter. So, okay, hold on. Let me see. Oh, uh, personal page. The, your artist page or your personal page? Go on the artist page.
Somebody asked, are you still with the Summer Disciples group? Summer Disciples? Oh, uh, so yeah, they're still my boys, man. You can look at uh, like my boy Matthew Strife. Uh, you know, he still does a lot, uh, a lot of stuff with me, you know what I'm saying, whether it's helping out at the shows. Uh, one, you know, one of the guys I, I actually uh, I grew up with, and the other, the other cat who was in Electron, he uh, he actually moved out of the country. I think he's in like uh, Peru or something right now. So I haven't spoken to him, um, but we we're probably definitely gonna do probably definitely we're definitely gonna do something uh, in the near future once everybody comes back from what they're doing, and, and we're gonna get it in definitely. Uh, so, so uh, I would imagine that a lot of people don't know what the Summa Disciples is. What, what exactly is that group? Yeah, it, it's a group that kind of uh, came out of me. It was about my sophomore year in college. Uh, you know, it was it was these chairs. It was these silver chairs that 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 were next to. Uh, I think it was it was some restaurant like with, in the school in the uh, student center, uh, and we would always go there. Like I think that's how we met, you know. And we would go there and we would talk about you know the most you know intellectual uh, topics of the time, whether it be politics, you know, is, it, is Hillary Clinton, uh, you know, what happens with the red button, you know, is, is Hillary Clinton able to be you know president? And we used to talk about the most interesting things, and we kind of just formed a group. Uh, we, 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 you know, out of just one day and we came together, uh, we, we started rehearsing, we did a few shows, uh, we did a few songs and, and that was it, man. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that was everybody, everybody eventually, uh, you know, like I said, Matt, my boy, Matthew Strife, like he's still, uh, he's still in St. Louis, but the other cat, Electron actually left. He's out of the country right now. So, mm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Somebody else asked, does your, does your, um, I don't know where to go. Uh, does your nerd alter ego have a name? <laughs> uh, <laughs> does it have a, no, no, it's all me. It's all Prince E. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's all me. I, I should think that's a good, that might be cool. Cause it's kind of like the step, the Steve and the Stefan. The transformation between them. Right. Uh, <laughs> maybe, man. Maybe I'm gonna think about that. Right now, it's just all Prince E. It's all Prince E. And then you can go ahead and battle them on your next track. Or, or, or. Check okay. my Twitter too for questions, cause my I think my phone is, is tripping right now. But uh, just I guess when you get a chance, I don't know if anybody even wanted to. Now, there, 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 now there's quite a there's quite a few there's a lot of random questions but we'll, we'll answer a few more and then we'll get up out of here maybe like 10 more minutes um this, this is random what's your favorite cartoon of all time oh man favorite cartoon of all time wow uh Well, immediately what came to mind was Hey Arnold. Because I used to always watch Hey Arnold before going to school. You know what I'm saying? When I came back to school, Hey Arnold, football head, all that. Uh, but I know I'm going to think about something else, like, later tonight. Like, damn, that's really my favorite cartoon. Uh, but let, let, let's say Hey let's say hey <laughs> Arnold right now. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know what that is. I'm, I've never watched Hey Arnold. Oh, no. Before. No way, but, man. No way. <laughs> we we might not we might not have got that on the West Coast. I'm not, I've never heard of Hey Arnold. I was um, I was a big Pokemon fan. Is that a considered okay um, cartoon? A what fan? Pokemon. I don't know if that's considered a cartoon. But I used to what, love what cartoon. I'm saying I can probably show you my action right now. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so, okay, here goes another question. In your videos, you portray smart as nerdy. Is your view of what smart, is that your view of what smart uh, yeah, is? Yeah, I mean, we kind of answered that question earlier. Are you the majority uh, see smart as nerdy? Uh, 
Oh no, Sorry, I guess basically. Uh, we kind of answered that question earlier. I think uh, you know, yeah. smart is definitely not nerd. Uh, I give you an example. You know, one of the things that we want to do is we don't want people to to to, to stereotype intelligence. You know, I got I got people on my team that have been to prison that have that have uh, you know, that are really from like St. Louis is we we're number one in the, the most dangerous city. So I got people on my team that are some of the most brilliant minds that I've ever met. You know what I'm saying? And to discriminate against somebody uh, based on their their outward appearance is stupid. You know what I'm saying? It's stupid. Unfortunately, it's the norm. It's what we all do. We all generalize. We all put people in the categories. So we're actually against that. We want to change that. Uh, you know, so not at all. Not at all. The reason I kind of went to the to the neuro route, like I said earlier, was because it just makes things a little easier. You know, the one I enjoy uh, dressing like that. I enjoy separating myself from people, and it makes things a little easier for people to understand. Uh, you know, once people start talking to me, I mean, I'm cooler than a lot of these other rappers, you know what I'm saying? I might have a bow tie with some glasses, but I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm a, I'm a cool guy, you know? I, like, people, and it's, it's funny when people clown me, too. Like, they clown me on my videos. They're like, he's not a nerd. He's too cool. I'm like, yeah, okay. I guess nerds can't be cool. I don't, I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, man, you know, uh, as far as the definition of a nerd, that's, that's a pretty airy, uh, concept because you know what is a nerd is it the you know is it a geek is it a you know somebody socially awkward is it just an intelligent person like we've got a lot of room to run here uh so unfortunately today you know a lot of you know with the especially with the bullying too like that was another reason i kind of chose the uh you know the nerd route because you know bullying is is big you know today like when we see bully we see you know, kids getting bullied, kids committing suicide, unfortunately being bullied and, and just nerds. They, they were always marginalized. But now I think, you know, I've given I've, I, to make smart cool. I kind of I speak for these people, these people that are that are put it put aside, and set aside and, you know, subjected to, to, you know, harassment on a daily basis. So if I can make that cool, you eliminate all of that. So that's what it is. Mm-hmm. All, right, all right, all right. So, so here's last question, and 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 we'll get up out of here. Um, what what uh what rappers uh, are you fans of now, or were any releases this year from other artists that you're looking forward to to coming out? Definitely, we we kind of answered that question too. You know, I'm a, I'm gonna definitely do something with the big homie Immortal Technique. Uh, you know, he is the reason I, you know, I am where I am today, you know, whether it's on a musical level, whether it's on an academic level, like I don't tell a lot of people my story, but you know, I was a terrible student coming up, you know, I, I, I was a C, below C student, you know, I did things just to make my mom and pops, you know, happy, you know, just to, to get by, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and then I found the music, KRS is the cannabis. And specifically, uh, the mortal techniques, they kind of just, they, it, he served as the catalyst for that intellectual side of my brain. I started researching everything he was saying. I started reading more. I started, you know, uh, participating in class. I started sitting in the front of the class. A lot of people don't know, just, just by the very uh, act of sitting in front of the class, your grades will improve dramatically. So, you know... After that, you know, I, I initially I got the full ride from the University of St. Louis. I got paid to go to school. Uh, so, you know, I actually just met Technique uh, down in Texas for uh, South by Southwest. Uh, we chopped it up for a minute and, you know, so we still communicate on a regular basis. You know, he, I, I got so much love for him, whatever he demand. I'm a, I'm a soldier for his, his fight. And, uh, you know, we're definitely going to get on something. I was talking to the big homie just today. Another kid, I was like, fucking double jet out mind. Like incredible lyricist, uh, you know, I definitely something else with cannabis. I want to rock with, uh, with J Cole, Drip Lamar's, uh, B O B. You know what I'm saying? I'm big fans of guys. Uh, just, just for that new school, because a lot of people think like I'm older than I am, but I'm a young guy. See, I like women. I like a lot. I like, uh, you know, I like, like all the things that our generation likes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 
So, you know, I, I'm definitely going to link up with those guys. Man, I love, to, like I said, I love to do something with Hobson in the future, funk volume in the future, man. And we can, we can get that cracking, man. So, just, just you say the word, Dan, and we, we, we good. For sure, for sure. For sure, man. I'll be in touch. Hit, definitely hit us up when you come to town. Um, you know, I, I appreciate you spending this last hour letting people know your story, the different things you're doing. Um, I appreciate you bearing with all the technical difficulties. I, I have to get my homie to make the adjustments to the site so it's a much smoother process next time. Um, you know, but it looks like we had a close to 300 people tuning in. So, you know, we got some exposure there. Um, but yeah, man, thank you. And I, and I, congratulations on all the success. I've been following you ever since, you know, you participated in our, in our contest. Um, and I see, I see that the movement's grown, you know, exponentially since then. Um, so congrats to you, man. Congrats. All right, man. Well, I'll be in touch, man. You take it easy. Cool, man. I right, man. It's my pleasure being here. Anytime you need me, let me know, man. The, all the fans listening, definitely look out for that Prince E Funk Volume collab. Uh, y'all already know where to reach me to Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash EA, to Facebook, makesmartcool.com, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Copy gear if you want. You know what I'm saying? And, and we out, man. Mm. <laughs> all right, man. Peace.